Egg, Wikipedia Audio An egg is the organic vessel containing the zygote in which an animal embryo develops until it can survive on its own, at which point the animal hatches. An egg results from fertilization of an ovum. Most arthropods, vertebrates, and mollusks lay eggs, although some, such as scorpions and most mammals, do not. Reptile eggs, bird eggs, and monotreme eggs are laid out of water, and are surrounded by a protective shell, either flexible or inflexible. Eggs laid on land or in nests are usually kept within a warm and favorable temperature range while the embryo grows. When the embryo is adequately developed it hatches, i.e. breaks out of the egg's shell. Some embryos have a temporary egg tooth they use to crack, pip, or break the egg shell or covering. The largest recorded egg is from a whale shark, and was 30 cm x 14 cm x 9 cm in size. Whale shark eggs typically hatch within the mother. At 1.5 kg and up to 17.8 cm x 14 cm, the ostrich egg is the largest egg of any living bird, though the extinct elephant bird and some dinosaurs laid larger eggs. The bee hummingbird produces the smallest known bird egg, which weighs half of a gram. Some eggs laid by reptiles and most fish, amphibians, insects, and other invertebrates can be even smaller. Eggs of different animal groups Reproductive structures similar to the egg in other kingdoms are termed spores, or in spermatophytes seeds, or in gametophytes egg cells. Several major groups of animals typically have readily distinguishable eggs. Cormorant eggs are rough and chalky, tinamou eggs are shiny, duck eggs are oily and waterproof, cassowary eggs are heavily pitted. The most common reproductive strategy for fish is known as oviparity, in which the female lays undeveloped eggs that are externally fertilized by a male. Typically large numbers of eggs are laid at one time and the eggs are then left to develop without parental care. When the larvae hatch from the egg, they often carry the remains of the yolk in a yolk sac which continues to nourish the larvae for a few days as they learn how to swim. Once the yolk is consumed, there is a critical point after which they must learn how to hunt and feed or they will die. A few fish, notably the rays and most sharks use ovoviviparity in which the eggs are fertilized and develop internally. However the larvae still grow inside the egg consuming the egg's yolk and without any direct nourishment from the mother. The mother then gives birth to relatively mature young. In certain instances, the physically most developed offspring will devour its smaller siblings for further nutrition while still within the mother's body. This is known as intrauterine cannibalism. In certain scenarios, some fish such as the hammerhead shark and reef shark are viviparous, with the egg being fertilized and developed internally, but with the mother also providing direct nourishment. The eggs of fish and amphibians are jelly-like. Cartilaginous fish eggs are fertilized internally and exhibit a wide variety of both internal and external embryonic development. Most fish species spawn eggs that are fertilized externally, typically with the male inseminating the eggs after the female lays them. These eggs do not have a shell and would dry out in the air. Even air-breathing amphibians lay their eggs in water, or in protective foam as with the coast foam nest tree frog, Chiromantis zirampolina. Bird eggs are laid by females and incubated for a time that varies according to the species, a single young hatches from each egg. Average clutch sizes range from 1 to about 17. Some birds lay eggs even when not fertilized, it is not uncommon for pet owners to find their lone bird nesting on a clutch of unfertilized eggs, which are sometimes called wind eggs.
Ovula parity means the female spawns unfertilized eggs, which must then be externally fertilized. Ovula parity is typical of bony fish, anurans, echinoderms, bivalves, and nadarians. Most aquatic organisms are oviliparous. The term is derived from the diminutive meaning little egg dot. Oviparity is where fertilization occurs internally and so the eggs laid by the female are zygotes, often with important outer tissues added. Oviparity is typical of birds, reptiles, some cartilaginous fish and most arthropods. Terrestrial organisms are typically oviparous, with egg casings that resist evaporation of moisture. Ovoviviparity is where the zygote is retained in the adult's body but there are no trophic interactions. That is, the embryo still obtains all of its nutrients from inside the egg. Most live-bearing fish, amphibians, or reptiles are actually ovoviviparous. Examples include the reptile Anguis fragilis, the seahorse, and the frogs Rhinoderma darwinii and Rio batricius. Histotrophic viviparity means embryos develop in the female's oviducts but obtain nutrients by consuming other ova, zygotes, or sibling embryos. This intrauterine cannibalism occurs in some sharks and in the black salamander Salamandra atra. Marsupials excrete a uterine milk supplementing the nourishment from the yolk sac. Hematrophic viviparity is where nutrients are provided from the female's blood through a designated organ. This most commonly occurs through a placenta, found in most mammals. Similar structures are found in some sharks and in the lizard Pseudomoya pagans decree. In some hylid frogs, the embryo is fed by the mother through specialized gills. The default color of vertebrate eggs is the white of the calcium carbonate from which the shells are made, but some birds, mainly passerines, produce colored eggs. The pigment biliverdin and its zinc chelate give a green or blue ground color, and protoporphyrin produces reds and browns as a ground color or as spotting. Non-passerines typically have white eggs except in some ground-nesting groups such as the Charadriiformes, sand grouse, and nightjars, where camouflage is necessary, and some parasitic cuckoos which have to match the passerine host's egg. Most passerines, in contrast, lay colored eggs, even if there is no need of cryptic colors. Fish and Amphibian Eggs However some have suggested that the protoporphyrin markings on passerine eggs actually act to reduce brittleness by acting as a solid-state lubricant. If there is insufficient calcium available in the local soil, the egg shell may be thin, especially in a circle around the broad end. Protoporphyrin speckling compensates for this, and increases inversely to the amount of calcium in the soil. For the same reason, later eggs in a clutch are more spotted than early ones as the female's store of calcium is depleted. The color of individual eggs is also genetically influenced, and appears to be inherited through the mother only, suggesting that the gene responsible for pigmentation is on the sex-determining W chromosome. It used to be thought that color was applied to the shell immediately before laying but this research shows that coloration is an integral part of the development of the shell, with the same protein responsible for depositing calcium carbonate, or protoporphyrins when there is a lack of that mineral. In species such as the common guillemot, which nest in large groups, each female's eggs have very different markings, making it easier for females to identify their own eggs on the crowded cliff ledges on which they breed. Bird egg shells are diverse. For example, tiny pores in bird egg shells allow the embryo to breathe. The domestic hen's egg has around 7,000 pores. Bird eggs Colors 
Most bird eggs have an oval shape, with one end rounded and the other more pointed. This shape results from the egg being forced through the oviduct. Muscles contract the oviduct behind the egg, pushing it forward. The egg's wall is still shapeable, and the pointed end develops at the back. Long, pointy eggs are an incidental consequence of having a streamlined body typical of birds with strong flying abilities. Flight narrows the oviduct, which changes the type of egg a bird can lay. Cliff nesting birds often have highly conical eggs. They are less likely to roll off, tending instead to roll around in a tight circle. This trait is likely to have arisen due to evolution via natural selection. In contrast, many hole nesting birds have nearly spherical eggs. Shell Shape Predation Various examples Amniote eggs and embryos Many animals feed on eggs. For example, principal predators of the black oyster catcher s eggs include raccoons, skunks, mink, river and sea otters, gulls, crows and foxes. The stoat and long-tailed weasel steal ducks' eggs. Snakes of the genera Dasypeltis and Elachistodon specialize in eating eggs. Brood parasitism occurs in birds when one species lays its eggs in the nest of another. In some cases, the host's eggs are removed or eaten by the female, or expelled by her chick. Brood parasites include the cowbirds and many old world cuckoos. An average hooping crane egg is 102 mm long and weighs 208 grams. Mammalian eggs Eurasian oyster catcher eggs camouflaged in the nest. Egg of a Senegal parrot, a bird that nests in tree holes, on a 1 cm grid. Eggs of ostrich, emu, kiwi, and chicken. Finch egg next to American dime. Eggs of duck, goose, guinea fowl, and chicken. Eggs of ostrich, cassowary, chicken, flamingo, pigeon, and blackbird. Egg of an emu. Invertebrate eggs. Like amphibians, amniotes are air-breathing vertebrates, but they have complex eggs or embryos including an amniotic membrane. Amniotes include reptiles and mammals. Reptile eggs are often rubbery and are always initially white. They are able to survive in the air. Often the sex of the developing embryo is determined by the temperature of the surroundings, with cooler temperatures favoring males. Not all reptiles lay eggs, some are viviparous. Evolution and structure Dinosaurs laid eggs, some of which have been preserved as petrified fossils. Among mammals, early extinct species laid eggs, as do platypuses and echidnas. Platypuses and two genera of echidna are Australian monotremes. Marsupial and placental mammals do not lay eggs but their unborn young do have the complex tissues that identify amniotes. Scientific Classifications Egg Size and Yolk Microlecithal The eggs of the egg-laying mammals are macrolecithal eggs very much like those of reptiles. The eggs of marsupials are likewise macrolecithal, but rather small and develop inside the body of the female, but do not form a placenta. The young are born at a very early stage, and can be classified as a larva in the biological sense. In placental mammals, the egg itself is void of yolk, but develops an umbilical cord from structures that in reptiles would form the yolk sac. Receiving nutrients from the mother, the fetus completes the development while inside the uterus. 
Eggs are common among invertebrates, including insects, spiders, mollusks, and crustaceans. All sexually reproducing life, including both plants and animals, produces gametes. The male gamete cell, sperm, is usually motile whereas the female gamete cell, the ovum, is generally larger and sessile. The male and female gametes combine to produce the zygote cell. In multicellular organisms the zygote subsequently divides in an organized manner into smaller more specialized cells, so that this new individual develops into an embryo. In most animals the embryo is the sessile initial stage of the individual life cycle, and is followed by the emergence of a modal stage. The zygote or the ovum itself or the sessile organic vessel containing the developing embryo may be called the egg. A recent proposal suggests that the phylotypic animal body plans originated in cell aggregates before the existence of an egg stage of development. Eggs, in this view, were later evolutionary innovations, selected for their role in ensuring genetic uniformity among the cells of incipient multicellular organisms. Scientists often classify animal reproduction according to the degree of development that occurs before the new individuals are expelled from the adult body, and by the yolk which the egg provides to nourish the embryo. Vertebrate eggs can be classified by the relative amount of yolk. Simple eggs with little yolk are called microlecithal, medium-sized eggs with some yolk are called mesolecithal, and large eggs with a large concentrated yolk are called macrolecithal. This classification of eggs is based on the eggs of chordates, though the basic principle extends to the whole animal kingdom. Small eggs with little yolk are called microlecithal. The yolk is evenly distributed so the cleavage of the egg cell cuts through and divides the egg into cells of fairly similar sizes. In sponges and nadarians the dividing eggs develop directly into a simple larva, rather like a morula with cilia. In nadarians, this stage is called the planula, and either develops directly into the adult animals or forms new adult individuals through a process of budding. Microlecithal eggs require minimal yolk mass. Such eggs are found in flapworms, roundworms, annelids, bivalves, echinoderms, the lancelet, and in most marine arthropods. In anatomically simple animals, such as nadarians and flapworms, the fetal development can be quite short, and even microlecithal eggs can undergo direct development. These small eggs can be produced in large numbers. In animals with high egg mortality, microlecithal eggs are the norm, as in bivalves and marine arthropods. However, the latter are more complex anatomically than e.g. flapworms, and the small microlecithal eggs do not allow full development. Instead, the eggs hatch into larvae which may be markedly different from the adult animal. In placental mammals, where the embryo is nourished by the mother throughout the whole fetal period, the egg is reduced in size to essentially a naked egg cell. Mesolecithal eggs have comparatively more yolk than the microlecithal eggs. The yolk is concentrated in one part of the egg, with the cell nucleus and most of the cytoplasm in the other. The cell cleavage is uneven, and mainly concentrated in the cytoplasma-rich animal pole. The larger yolk content of the mesolecithal eggs allows for a longer fetal development. Comparatively anatomically simple animals will be able to go through the full development and leave the egg in a form reminiscent of the adult animal. This is the situation found in hagfish and some snails. Animals with smaller size eggs or more advanced anatomy will still have a distinct larval stage, though the larva will be basically similar to the adult animal, as in lampreys, coelacanth, and the salamanders. 
Eggs with a large yolk are called macrolecithal. The eggs are usually few in number, and the embryos have enough food to go through full fetal development in most groups. Macrolecithal eggs are only found in selected representatives of two groups, cephalopods and vertebrates. Macrolecithal eggs go through a different type of development than other eggs. Due to the large size of the yolk, the cell division cannot split up the yolk mass. The fetus instead develops as a plate-like structure on top of the yolk mass, and only envelops it at a later stage. A portion of the yolk mass is still present as an external or semi-external yolk sac at hatching in many groups. This form of fetal development is common in bony fish, even though their eggs can be quite small. Despite their macrolecithal structure, the small size of the eggs does not allow for direct development, and the eggs hatch to a larval stage. In terrestrial animals with macrolecithal eggs, the large volume to surface ratio necessitates structures to aid in transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide and for storage of waste products so that the embryo does not suffocate or get poisoned from its own waste while inside the egg, see amniote. In addition to bony fish and cephalopods, macrolecithal eggs are found in cartilaginous fish, reptiles, birds, and monotreme mammals. The eggs of the coelacanths can reach a size of 9 cm in diameter and the young go through full development while in the uterus, living on the copious yolk. Animals are commonly classified by their manner of reproduction, at the most general level distinguishing egg-laying from live-bearing. These classifications are divided into more detail according to the development that occurs before the offspring are expelled from the adult's body. Traditionally. The term hematropic derives from the Latin for blood feeding, contrasted with histotrophic for tissue feeding. Eggs laid by many different species, including birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish, have probably been eaten by mankind for millennia. Popular choices for egg consumption are chicken, duck, roe, and caviar but by a wide margin the egg most often humanly consumed is the chicken egg, typically unfertilized. According to the kashrut, that is the set of Jewish dietary laws, kosher food may be consumed according to halakha. Kosher meat and milk cannot be mixed or stored together. Eggs are considered parave despite being an animal product and can be mixed with either milk or kosher meat. Mayonnaise, for instance, is usually marked parave despite by definition containing egg. Many vaccines for infectious diseases are produced in fertile chicken eggs. The basis of this technology was the discovery in 1931 by Alice Miles Woodruff and Ernest William Good Pasteur at Vanderbilt University that the rickettsia and viruses that cause a variety of diseases will grow in chicken embryos. This enabled the development of vaccines against influenza, chicken pox, smallpox, yellow fever, typhus, rocky mountain spotted fever and other diseases. A popular Easter tradition in some parts of the world is the decoration of hard-boiled eggs. Adults often hide the eggs for children to find, an activity known as an Easter egg hunt. A similar tradition of egg painting exists in areas of the world influenced by the culture of Persia. Before the spring equinox in the Persian New Year tradition, each family member decorates a hard-boiled egg and sets them together in a bowl. The tradition of a dancing egg is held during the Feast of Corpus Christi in Barcelona and other Catalan cities since the 16th century. It consists of an emptied egg positioned over the water jet from a fountain, which starts turning without falling. Although a food item, eggs are sometimes thrown at houses, cars, or people. This act, 
known commonly as egging in the various English-speaking countries, is a minor form of vandalism and, therefore, usually a criminal offence and is capable of damaging property as well as causing serious eye injury. On Halloween, for example, trick or treaters have been known to throw eggs at property or people from whom they received nothing. Eggs are also often thrown in protests, as they are inexpensive and non-lethal, yet very messy when broken. Eggs have sometimes been collected as curiosities or for museums. Egg collecting has had a serious effect on populations of some species and is now illegal in many countries such as the United Kingdom. Insect eggs, in this case those of the emperor gum moth, are often laid on the underside of leaves. Fish eggs, such as these herring eggs are often transparent and fertilized after laying. Skates and some sharks have a uniquely shaped egg case called a mermaid's purse. A testudo hermani emerging fully developed from a reptilian egg. A schistosoma mekanji egg. Eggs of Huffmanila homo, a nematode parasite in a fish. Eggs of various parasites from wild primates. Mesolecithal. Macrolecithal Egg laying reproduction Human use Food Eggs in kosh root Vaccine manufacture Culture Collecting Gallery